I do hope you've already had your evening meal because if you haven't, you might find your appetites completely disappeared when you've had a butcher's at mine. Uh, the writer and environmentalist George Monbiot prompted howls of outrage on social media today after he revealed that he'd cooked and eaten a squirrel after finding it dead but still warm at the roadside. He joins me now to explore the origins of this outrage and our increasingly confused relationship with the realities of meat production and also to show us how it's done, uh, this time with one that we acquired from a farm shop. And I should warn you, though, that we will still be uh, butchering it, possibly skinning, so some of you may want to look away at that point. Rest assured, I'll tell you when you need to duck behind the sofa. Um, George, although it may look like a sort of ready, steady, cook tribute act, there's an important point here, and, and it's to do with the fact that many of us will be squeamish, despite the fact that we're happy to eat meat. Yes, and I, I regard almost all farm meat as unethical. There are huge problems with it. Um, the land take, which deprives people of grain, which would otherwise be grown for human consumption, pushing up the price, um, the, an the welfare of the animals themselves, um, antibiotic resistance, as um, farms use a lot of antibiotics, it um, creates resistant pathogens. Um, the uh, manure and other forms of pollution getting down into the rivers. Um, there's, there's just a huge range of problems here and it's not solved even by going free range organic because that just adds to the fun. whole load which is being attached to it. But there's some good news here as well. Talk, talk the, and cook there's if an you alternative. Were, I'm starving. Sure. Right, and the good news is... And, and this is the point at which if, if you fear that you may be a little bit um, delicate, then you probably should look away briefly. There are millions of squirrels, rabbits, pigeons, deer killed every year, and a lot of them are landfilled. And it doesn't have to be the case. It's not very nice, but meat production isn't. But at least there's no further ethical problem here. I'm just cutting through the tail vertebrae, through the tail bone, in other words, but not the skin. It's quite a delicate operation, that. Be careful. And then, yep, yeah, it's a super sharp knife, by the way. And be very careful. Yep. Yeah. And then cutting along a little bit each leg. This is a rather fat old squirrel. A lot of meat in it, but the older they are, the tougher they get. So they do have to be Mind marinated. Mind George. Yep. And then you just get enough purchase I, uh, on the skin. I've already mentioned Ready, Steady, Cook. <laughs> I might have to start channeling Blue Peter. I encourage <laughs> you to move, move along to one that we've prepared yes, earlier. Yes, and, at, at and so point. here's one, well, because it takes some time, yes. I've got most of the skin off. All that's now required is to remove the bits. Okay. And I want people to be aware of the realities of meat production. You know, meat comes from animals which have heads, they have tails. They that, have... And, that, and that is indeed why we are showing this, because meat does come from animals, and yet many of us do seem to forget that. Is, is there anything you wouldn't eat? Well, for roadkill, I'll take just about anything except cats and dogs. Of course, it has to be fresh. Why not cats and dogs? Uh, mostly because the owners would get upset. Oh, but otherwise, I mean, in terms of your own constitution, uh, there are cultural, with cultural barriers which um, even uh, rather feral people like me um, feel oh, the need okay. to respect. But um, I feel. Uh, I, I feel a marinade coming over. on. What's in, yep. what's in so the So I'm going to marinate them in lemon juice, and the reason for that is that they're tough. And here are a couple we prepared earlier, which are just about ready. And, and how big an impact, if everybody were to adopt your, your, your culinary practices, how big an impact would it have on, on farming? And well, on, on, I, mean, I would like people at risk only, of being silly. Are there enough squirrels to go around? I would like people only to eat this, uh, this sort of meat. And okay. this means that you know, you're not going to eat meat very often if there's going to be enough to go around. Yeah, once or twice, three, three or four times a year. Let's get someone to a year. plate before, before the credits yeah. start rolling. Sure. So, I mean, you yeah. can't realistically expect the nation to, to sort of turn into latter-day hunter-gatherers. No, no, but what I would like to see is that the hunter-gatherers who are... Oh, see, Careful. who are cool, dear, That's excuse all right. me. <laughs> all right, excuse fingers. There we yeah. go. I might just grab Nigella, that. Nigella, your heart out. There we go. Thank you. Um, is that the people who are hunting them start selling them and we start eating them. And we've got a nice Chianti here a as nice well. A nice Chianti. George, yes, if you're Very interested. Fitting. So, i better try this. <laughs> Mm. It might be easier said than that. Kind of the whole thing up. And yeah, yeah, it. that's it. that's the best way to do it. What do you reckon? I well, think I had a gag prepared. Meat. I was going to say mm -hmm. it tastes like chicken because everything does, but it doesn't, does doesn't, it? And it's, no. it's, it's perfectly edible, mm. even with the sort of original model line there before. But realistically, George Monbiot, can you see this catching on? I, I would really hope it does. I mean, people are becoming more adventurous. There's no reason why we shouldn't start eating stuff like this. It's great meat. It's got none of all the problems which are associated with farming. People are killing them anyway.
Many thanks indeed, and bon appétit. Thank you.